So I was getting a lot of questions on my belt grinder build and a lot of the questions specifically were about the motor and the motor controller, how to make everything work together. So I want to put together a quick video for you guys, kind of an overview about these treadmill motors, uh, the motor controllers, how to make everything work together in order to get your variable speed motor working for your project. These treadmill parts are great to use for projects, they're readily available and they're cheap. First, we'll take a look at the belt grinder and see how the variable speed works on it. Here's the belt grinder as a whole. You can see this is the variable speed motor control. It's a uh, 5k linear potentiometer. The treadmill motor and the motor control board. The light is on because it's plugged in so I probably shouldn't be jamming my fingers in there. And also there's a inductor choke. You turn this knob and then when it gets to a certain point the belt starts. So that's about the slowest that it'll go without stalling. I never really use it at that speed. It's just there. So let's turn this up. That's about half speed. So that was the range of speeds from the slowest it'll go up to the tip top. So there is quite a range. All that rattling that you heard was this door. I had it open. Um, it doesn't bounce around very much. There is some vibration, but I do clamp it down when I use it because when I apply pressure to the belt with the work piece, it kind of wants to push it back, even though the thing does weigh about 70 pounds. So that's how the grinder works. Now let's take a look at some of the parts that make up the speed control on this. Okay, so here's some of the various parts that you're going to be using from your treadmill for your variable speed motor control. You've got the motor and you've got two different types of motor controllers. We'll go into the motor controllers in a second. But first off, why do you want to use these DC motor treadmill parts? Can I just grab an AC motor that I have lying around, throw a dimmer switch on it, and boom, I have variable speed? You could do that, and after you replace the dimmer switch a couple times, you're probably going to end up burning out some of the windings in the motor. So it's not the best idea. That's not to say you can't use alternating current motors as variable speed. You can use a variable frequency drive or a VFD for three phase, but something tells me if you have that, then you probably won't need to be watching this video anyway. With an AC motor, you can use belts and pulleys, and there's nothing wrong with that. You'll get variable speed. I mean, depending on how many steps that you have on the pulleys, then you're gonna have, if you, know, if you have two three-step pulleys, then you're gonna have three speeds. If you have four-step pulleys, you're gonna have four speeds, and so on and you won't lose any torque like that and it'll work fine. However, my shop space is kind of limited. So when I design things, I kind of have it in mind that I don't want it to be as big as possible. So when I have an alternate, a big alternating current motor along with belts and pulleys, it just kind of starts becoming oversized and I don't have the room for that. Which brings us to these treadmill parts. The major advantage of using direct current is it's easy to control the speed for a low cost. Treadmills are so easy to come by. People get them for Christmas for their New Year's resolution. They run around a few times and then they quickly realize that running sucks. So they take the treadmill, they throw it in the basement or they throw it in the garage where it sits for a little bit of time when they realize it's taking up too much room. They put it on Craigslist for 30 bucks or even for free. And then you come along and you've got a variable speed order for your project. Couldn't be any better. Another advantage that I kind of touched upon already is the compactness of these, pro of, of these parts. You've got a two and a half horsepower motor here. For an alternating car and a two and a half horsepower motor is pretty sizable. Of course you have to make allowances for the motor controllers as well. Also you're getting more torque in the low range. Another advantage of using these treadmill parts is that you have a very wide range of speeds available to you. This motor here is rated at 7,099 RPM, 7,100 RPM. So you have a huge range of speeds to choose from. Whereas with an alternating current you're basically limited to 3,450 or 1,725 RPM. Of course, when you use belts and pulleys and things like that, you're going to get a larger range. However, you're not going to be able to adjust the speed on the fly like you can with these motors. So these are the motor controllers. These are kind of the brains of the operation, so to speak. 
And when it comes to treadmill motor controllers, you basically have two types of motor controllers in my opinion. You have the MC60 motor controller and all of its revisions, and then you have everything else. This one being everything else. If you want to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of frustration, just go on eBay, grab yourself an MC60 motor controller, plug it in, and you'll be done. It's plug and play, there's, there's tons of information about this board online. These boards you can get online, New, I believe they'll cost you around $120. I've seen them on eBay anywhere from $40 to $80. Generally, they're around $60, $70, $80. If you get lucky, you can find one for cheaper. With these, with these other types of boards, you're going to have to fiddle around with it, maybe get other parts. So this board becomes a secondary project off of your main project when you're working on something. So if spending that much money on these motor controller boards isn't your thing, you're going to like my next project. I ordered about $15 of parts and I threw them together and it controls these variable speed DC motors very well. It's going to be a cheap variable speed motor controller for around $15 and it's going to do everything that these motor controllers can do without some of the nuances that are built into these boards, namely being the soft start. I'll touch upon that later. So if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel, like this video, so that way when the new video comes out, you can see how to control these treadmill motors, variable speed, for real cheap. But anyway, you can see some of the main differences in these boards. Let's start with this board. First thing you're gonna see is these large capacitors. I'm assuming that these are gonna be in parallel. And what these large capacitors tell you is that there's a full wave bridge rectifier. So the way this turns alternating current from the wall into direct current, the alternating current comes into this bridge rectifier where it converts it to a full wave pulsed direct current signal at 120 hertz. From there it passes through these filter rectifiers where it smooths out the pulse and eventually it moves on to a pulse width modulator and by varying the pulse width that's how you're going to control the motor. This board operates much differently. With this board, you have the alternating current coming into the board and it passes through these SCRs or thyristors. There's actually five of them on this board. So you have these five SCRs and also of diodes as well. I believe they're all in a bridge rectifier formation so that way it's a full wave rectifier. So I'm not sure if this board has a pulse width modulator. It very well could be one of these two integrated circuits. But I'm not sure if you can vary the pulse width of these thyristors in order to get the variable speed that you need. I'm not going to delve too deep into this. Okay, so now you say, well that's all fine and good, so how do I plug it in and make it work for my project? Well first thing, when you go ripping apart these treadmills, don't cut the wires. These wires are great, this is the plug that goes into the wall. It's got, this, it's got a switch on it, it's got a fuse. Am I going to use that stuff? Probably not. But what I'm going to use are these terminals. They plug right into the board, they're made to fit the board. You don't have to do any soldering, not yet anyway. So when you're going to plug this in, first thing you do, this is going to the wall. Other end, we have our black and we have our white leads coming from the wall. Everything on this board is labeled nice, nice. All you have to do is look at the board and it's going to tell you what to do. So these two terminals right here, it says AC1 and AC2. I'm not sure if you can see that. It says AC1 and AC2. So all you do with that is plug your alternating current in here. So now you have your AC going to the board. Next thing you do, so you've got your motor. So here's your motor. Let's zoom out here a little bit. So now you've got your motor. You got your AC going to the board, now you've got your motor. It says right on the board what to, what to do on this side. Red, black. So you just take the red wire, plug it in here. You take the black wire, plug it in there. Now you're almost through. These blue wires, they're for a thermal switch in case the motor overheats. I never use those, I just take those out and throw that junk away. So now the only thing left to do is you want a 5K linear potentiometer. That's going to give you the greatest variability in terms of speed control from minimum to maximum. 
This is just a cheap potentiometer that I'm going to use right now. Eventually, when I use this for a project, I'm going to get a better one so that way it'll uh, you know last longer. Now, all you have to do with this, you see, you've got three terminals on the potentiometer, and you've got three terminals on your board. See where I'm going with this? So you take the middle, the middle terminal, the middle wire goes to the middle terminal and then the two outside go to these two outside terminals. So if you wire this up and you go to find that your potentiometer doesn't turn on, you turn it up all the way and then you turn it back all the way, your motor spins up way too fast. You have these two outside leads reversed. So just take it, reverse the wires and it should work. And the other thing is, is you can run this motor counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever you choose. All you have to do is just switch these two black and red wire. However, what's going to happen is if you want to use the flywheel and you put it in whichever the direction this motor isn't meant to run in, the flywheel is just going to spin right off the end. So be aware of that. And I do like using these flywheels because it adds a good amount of mass and inertia to the rotors. So one of the features that people don't like the most about these treadmill motor controllers is the soft start feature. And it's set up that way for a safety feature on the treadmill. And you have it set to a certain RPM. You shut it off and then you have to reset the speed control to that RPM again. You can't just flick the switch and it will restart at that same RPM. So that's the biggest annoying feature with these. I've seen online people try to clip resistors here and there. Um, I'm not going to try that because for my belt grinder it works fine. So that's it for this video. Hope I helped clear up some of the questions that you guys had. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Okay, thanks for watching.